If you've ever thought about quitting your job, packing it up, and pursuing your dream life, it's not as far-fetched as you might think. In her book, Living Without Reservations, A Journey by Land and Sea in Search of Happiness, Barbara Elaine Singer tells us how she did it and how you can do it as well. And Barbara Elaine Singer joins us now. Welcome. Thank it's you. great to have you. you. Now, you started this life at the age of 44, but it, it didn't start very happily. No, it was a little rocky in the beginning, but I was living the American dream. Big married, big house, big job, um, child in private school, boat, I had it all. But the more I accumulate, accumulated, the less I wanted it. And the treadmill just kept getting faster and faster, and it felt like enough was never enough. So my plan was to wait till my daughter went away to college. I didn't quite make it. I met someone new, got a divorce. Um, she went away to school, and the new man in my life died very suddenly of a heart attack. And so, so you had nothing? I was devastated, alone for the first time in my life, looking at the second half of my life going, now what? All right, so you thought, now what? What did you think about immediately? I called my dad, <laughs> and I, said, I asked if I could borrow his camper, and I wanted to go on a road trip out west. He said, no, but I'll go with you, and can we go to Alaska, which was his dream. So this is your first... Uh, part of your journey. Yes, so my dad and I drove from Pennsylvania to Alaska and back for six weeks. I returned to Orlando and know for sure that I can never live there again and re recreate this old life. So I liquidated my home and drove with two suitcases and a computer to South Florida and I found a job working at a marina bar and there I met Captain Pete and his dream was to go island hopping in the Caribbean on the sailboat where he lived, his home. So we took off. I didn't sail a day. I didn't know Captain Pete and we went a hundred days island hopping in the Caribbean. So this is the second part of your journey is the mm -hmm. Caribbean. Mm -hmm. What did you learn about yourself during that trip? I learned that I had a very small world before and that there was a whole big world out there and people were living adventurous, vagabond, incredible lives, completely different than my little nine to five job commuting and, and my old life. And then you found yourself in Italy. How did that happen? Well, after it was time to get off the boat, if I could live anywhere in the world, where was it? And of course, it was Florence, Italy. So I went on the internet, rented a room from a woman, wired her money, and two weeks later showed up. I didn't know a soul, and I didn't speak the language. That's amazing. <laughs> How can people replicate this? Is this? It can't be easy. It's easier than you think, okay. but you must make a decision that you're going to give up the machine. So once you get rid of the house, the car, saving for retirement, um, taking care of everyone else in your life, and just say, I am going to live a different way. So would you rather have um, a paycheck or um, an airline ticket? Would you rather have a walk-in closet or a backpack? Would you rather live your dream life or watch it on reality TV? So you really have to make some hard decisions. But once you, um, I liquidated my house and downsized my car. Um, the big questions that people always say is how, what do you do about like um, uh, health, health insurance? Right, that is a major concern for a lot mm -hmm. of people. So I have a catastrophic health insurance policy with a $5,000 deductible. Um, I'm healthy, I'm in the right weight category, I don't smoke, it costs me about $200 a month. So then what do you do? How do you make money? So I come back to the States for four months in the wintertime and work at a high season resort place being tipped and stash as much cash as I can and then make it last as long as I can. You make it so that you can make it last, mm -hmm. right? You I'm just force yourself to live that way. Well, I'm renting a room from a local for about $500 a month somewhere in the world, and I do it in chunks of time, so three or four months. I'm not moving every day. That would be a very different mm -hmm. kind of life. Um, but then the other $500 a month would be just your basic living expenses, but you're doing it in other countries, so choose your country wisely. I happen to love Italy, so the euro is, is stronger than the dollar now, so it's not a bargain to go there, but it's where I want to be. Your biggest expense is your your living expense, like uh, the rental of your room. Yes. And then what would be your second largest? Would it be the... Um, the airline ticket to go okay. to and from Europe. So I only try to travel once abroad uh, and then come back. Right, now you're in Italy and you've started this amazing life. Yes. I, um, ten days after I got to Italy, I went to a winery as a tourist and met a handsome winemaker, Giuseppe, and now I live with him and his family on the winery. And we're going to le learn more about this new life in just a moment when Barbara Lane Singer returns with us in, here in Connecticut style. So stay with us.